Today we've got a very interesting and fun iron comparison discussing why technology might be powering the distance more than loft in your irons. We've got an I-59 7 iron and a G710 8 iron. Jackie will hit some shots and we'll see what TrackMan tells us on this comparison. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Maholder, Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Jackie Johnson, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today we've got an interesting, fun comparison. Uh, we've got a Ping I-59 7 iron, a Ping G710 8 iron. Um, they actually both have the same loft. Um, and so we're gonna hit shots with each and maybe showcase how the technology in the club heads is impacting the distance that uh, you can get a little bit or maybe as much as the loft. So um, Jackie, these two irons, I know you've been fitting customers into them all year. Um, very different club heads here. So um, I guess, you know, what is your experience with these irons and the, and the golfers that they fit into? Yeah, uh, you know, obviously the G710 is one of the most forgiving clubs that Ping offers, mm -hmm. right? So definitely going to have a higher MOI. Um, it's going to be an interesting test, though. I mean, the I-59 has been a hot commodity as well, but obviously less forgiving, yeah. you know, more of a forge club for Ping. So the lengths on these are actually the same, um, which is interesting. So yeah. we'll, we'll see really head-to-head -head what each technology of the head is going to give us. Um, the shafts, you know, you got the Ulta CB slate in the I-59, and then you got the um, older model in the Ulta CB and the G710. Okay. So um, pretty similar shafts as well in there. So it's really going to be a true comparison of technology in both of these heads. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, 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 what we're trying to show is the difference in like the different iron heads that are made now. I mean, this yeah. is Ping made both of these. One is designed for a specific niche of player and one is designed for probably the other end of the spectrum here. So um, for this test, Jackie, we're thinking that we'll hit 10 shots with each club here in total. Um, and again, you, you discussed the golf shafts, how they're similar. And then, of course, the loft is the same, the yep. length is the same. So it's a pretty good apples to apples test. Lie here. angle's the same too. Correct. Okay, yes. perfect. So we got, I mean, seriously, apples to apples test more or less here. But give me a prediction here because, uh, again, you're very familiar with both club heads. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've said a little bit, kind of tease a little bit, but what do you think we will see uh, in the test here? Maybe one will have more distance, more spin. What do you think here? Yeah, I think that the G710 with the higher MOI and being more forgiving. Uh, gonna see it. Uh, the dispersion circle, I would think, is going to be tighter. Okay. Um, and then, as far as the launch and distance, um, yeah, I think they're gonna be similar in mm -hmm. distance. I just think that the G710 is probably gonna launch a yeah. little bit higher, um, just because of the MOI of yeah. the club head. You know, we're gonna get see that more consistency of me being able to launch it yep. a little bit higher and, and create a little bit more um, spin on it. Yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, my, my thought is, I just, I think the center of gravity being so low yeah. and kind of behind the face in the, uh, in the G710 8 iron, I think that's gonna be higher launch. So that's my prediction, I guess. And that's kind of similar to yours. I mean, yes. that, that club is built for launch, built for distance, whereas the I-59 necessarily really isn't. Yeah, well, I-59 is not really built for someone like myself and my swing speed, right? So like mm -hmm. someone that has a, like yourself that swings faster than me is probably gonna see, uh, you know. Sure. A mm -hmm. better comparison with that I-59 than I will. Sure, well, uh, we've laid out the test here, we've laid out the clubs. Jackie, you ready to hit some shots here? Let's go. Jackie, five shots, ping I-59. Um, first, give me your thoughts on how that thing looks and how it feels. Because I know you're used to kind of a player's distance iron, so this is a little bit smaller club head, I think, and probably a different feel. Yeah, um, definitely a lot more grooves. That's the first thing I, yeah. I noticed. Uh, a little bit, well, definitely different. So a lot more grooves there. Um, club head itself, I mean, it looks sleek. It's a good-looking club. Mm -hmm. uh, from the back side. And yeah, definitely smaller um, in width. And then feel wise, um, I felt like I only really hit one good one. The okay. other ones kind of felt like 
I don't know, like a, a rock. And it's probably just because I didn't make solid contact right away. Okay, well, you know, it's interesting you say that because it doesn't seem like you lost, you know, too much distance either way, right? When you hit it solid, it didn't hit it solid. Yeah. Because um, everything's right around 120, 119, essentially. Uh, maybe, well, this one down went down to 114.6. But, I mean, other than that, you're not really losing a ton of carry distance for mishitting a player's iron. So, something yeah. to note there, I guess. So, I mean, I, it seems like that dispersion is pretty darn good to start. But, uh, obviously, G710 is a very different golf club. So, yep. we'll get to that one here. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, spin's definitely going to be lower. The G710 8 iron. So again, both of these are 34 degrees of loft. Yep. Um, I'll bring up, so that's the map. Do it with uh, both, and then we'll show the averages numbers wise. I noticed a couple of things. I noticed lower spin with the G710 yep. 8 iron. But I thought launch was higher, and it was. Um, so two degrees higher launch, actually. Well, a degree and a half, I guess. Um, but the spin was down by, you know, seven and 750 RPM, essentially. So, um, but, and you, you predicted the Spurgeon Circle would show something, and it certainly did. Look at those shots close to each other. So um, anything else you're taking away from that, Jackie, other than, I mean, a lot of our, some of our predictions are correct. I know we had mentioned some spin that I, I, I didn't, think it would be this much lower actually for G710 8 iron than the i 15 Yeah, if we were comparing, you know, 7 iron to 7 iron, definitely the spin would be Oh yeah. lower with this hands down. But yeah, um I mean, this one it honestly it felt better, but that's also cuz it was like I can just feel it absorbing, like even okay. the bad or not, you know, miss hits or yeah. whatever were still good, yeah. right? But I can feel that absorption. The good hit I hit on the I-59 was felt great. Yeah. But that's where, I mean, the different so club it's, head styles. It's right, because the I-59 is going to give the player the feedback they want yeah. when they miss. You know, those those better players, more consistent ball strikers, are looking for that feedback when they don't hit the center of the face. Most players that fit in a G710 are just like, just give me a club that goes straight. Yeah. It goes, you know, I can it can be consistent for me. And that's what we saw out of those five shots there. So. Um, let's do five more with each club here, uh, and then we'll really see what this data tells us. All right. That one was good. Pulled it maybe a touch. That's a good one. That was good. Yeah, just I pulled it a little bit. Right. That one was good. All right, so now after 10 shots with each club, we've kind of taken out one outlier per club. So we've got nine from each club on screen here. Um, that dispersion, certainly smaller with the G710 8 iron, as you predicted. Um, first of all, give me, now that you've hit both, kind of compare the look and feel of each. I know obviously just by that kind of stealth finish on the G710, huge difference with kind of the black, uh, you know, versus the like satin. But, yeah. Um, other than that, size wise, feel, would you, what were the differences? Well, yeah, I mean, the G710 is much bigger. Yeah. Like, for right. sure. Um, I actually felt like the G710 felt lighter, which, okay. yeah, I don't know, but it, it definitely felt lighter. Maybe that's why I was swinging a little yeah, bit faster. Could be. Um, the I-59, I felt like when I made solid contact with it, felt better than the G710. I obviously, sure. I got some more feedback from the I-59, but right. every single hit with the G710, like, felt good, but I had no idea, like, where yeah. it was going to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I knew it was going to probably go straight, but, like, how far it was going to go. They all tend to, you know, it was pretty good, obviously, mm -hmm. but there was not a, as much feedback to it. Sure. So it was just kind of absorbing anything yeah. I was hitting. Okay. Yeah, because, like, you know, that's 
again, there is the feedback piece with the forged I-59. And then, you know, it's kind of just stabilize the club head as much as possible with the G710. Yeah. But numbers wise, uh, G710 launch angle, almost two degrees higher, despite being the same loft. So uh, I think that does show a little bit of having that center of gravity so far, kind of lower behind the face, um, can really impact launch a little bit. Whereas the I-59 is not necessarily built to have high launch. Uh, and you saw it, you know, dip in launch angle. Spin, uh, about 300 RPM. Uh, fewer uh, for the G710. Uh, again, this is the eight iron, both are 34 degrees aloft. And so those were the kind of big takeaways, I think. Distance wise, it's pretty comparable. I mean, yeah. basically the same. Um, you know, obviously I think the I-59 was deviating a little bit more, right? So it wasn't as consistent. You see that standard deviation a little bit higher, whereas the G710 more consistent because, um, you know, that's stabilized club head, like you mentioned, a few times before, uh, miss hits are going to be not as punished. And height, a little bit higher, G710. Um, st same with a steeper landing angle. So, um, I mean, any other takeaways? Otherwise, the, the big takeaway for me, I mean, seriously, is just these, for, these, these irons built for forgiveness, built for high launch, I mean, they deliver it. You know, even because we see these manufacturers maybe go stronger and loft with these clubs, but ultimately they're trying to make sure the player gets into the right window. So. They can go stronger in loft because they have that extra weight down low and they can launch the ball a little bit higher. Um, so it, it, it ends up kind of matching up that way. Yeah, I think, I mean, I get this question all the time of like, you know, there's certain clubs that with loft, like you're going to hit, a, you can hit a seven iron. I mean, if someone is swinging 90 miles an hour with a seven iron, mm -hmm. yeah, you could give them a club, they're going to hit that seven iron 190, 200 yards. I mean, Right. Clubs are built to be able to do that these days, right? But, like, it's just a number on the club. So I think that's where, you know, when you're taking a look at sets and makeups and different, you know, technology and different heads and, you know, different manufacturers that are, you know, designed to do certain right. things, that's why club fitting is so important because, yeah, you, you might be able to hit a 7-iron super far but can you stop it is it going to yeah. roll out 15 yards is it is spinning gonna... you know 4,000 rpm or whatever yeah. for you then i mean at that point it's 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 not worth it right yeah and another thing too like you mentioned the number on the club like you know if you're playing with your buddies and they're like you know on a par three it's like what club are you hit and i'm hitting my seven iron your seven iron might have the same loft as his eight iron oh, right. or your partner's nine iron might be the same loft as your eight iron, or whatever you know so it's important to know the loft and how that impacts things. Because distance-wise, the 8-iron for G710, I-59, 7-iron, distance-wise, yeah. were basically the same. And it was just the matter of how the ball got there. You know, higher launch and lower spin with the G710. Lower launch, more spin with the I-59. Yeah. And that'll be impacted differently if you get different conditions, you get wind in there. So knowing that stuff is, is kind of key to, to really dialing in your irons. Right. So, yeah, overall, I'd say, you know, for someone like myself and where my swing speed's at, I fit, you know, there, there's a big window of what, you know, route you can go, yeah. right? Like if you're looking at just my swing speed and you're trying to fit someone, you know, typically you're probably going to go with a game improvement iron, mm -hmm. right? But like knowing how I hit the ball and consistency wise for myself and my handicap and yeah. all those things factor into, okay, well, now we're branching out into you know, going somewhere in this route, like a player's distance iron. And yeah. Like I would never go with a blade right. ever, but you you do branch into different categories. Yeah. So I mean, there's, there's so many different offerings out yeah. there. Um, and, and, and I mean, seriously, every single type of golfer can be covered by the iron offerings out there. I mean, this is Ping's kind of spectrum here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen the entire spectrum would include blueprint as well, but G710 up to I-59 covers almost everybody. And so from there, it's all about dialing in, you know, there's G425 and there's I-500 and there's all these different models. So, um, I mean, if you're not sure about what iron you fit in or what category you'd fit into, what type of iron head size you'd fit into, Second Swing is be a great place to come in and talk to one of our experts. Jackie can help you out. Again, this test today shows that, I mean, hey, maybe the, you know, the loft in terms of distance might not be in ter the a big difference maker, but it's the launch, it's the spin, it's how the ball gets to that distance that's going to be the big difference maker. So, 
Uh, Jackie, thanks for joining today, hitting the shots, giving us some insights. This was a pretty interesting uh, test here. Yeah, thanks for having me.